It is one of the 17 agencies under its parent science ministry. Now, the National Bell Technology Development Agency, NAPDA, is saddled with some huge responsibility on priority for the application of biotechnology on the nation's vast space and ecodiversity. But then, what is the new energy given to it under the recently renamed Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation? We will get the answers to these as well as other areas of interest and coverage with my guest shortly. My name is Blessing Abu. Welcome to the program. My guest is a professor of bioinorganic chemistry and he hails from Dambata local government area of Kano State. And prior to his appointment, he was a lecturer at the Federal University Dutsi, Jigawa State, where he held several academic and administrative positions. He was the pioneer head of department's chemistry. Now, this astute professor is with 41 scientific publications and a book which I will get him to talk about very soon. Now, for him, looking at the issue of biotechnology from a different angle has been his passion and also uh, is still pushing even his, with his present assignment. At a point, my guest was a visiting professor at the Omaro Mosa Yaradra University, Katsina and uh, Katsina State, and also at the Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, Kaduna State. He would later take up this current assignment from Mr. President, as President Muhammad Buhari, as a new Director General and the Chief Executive Officer of the National Biotechnology Development Agency, NABDA. The appointment took effect from 27th October 2020. On the spot this week, I'd like to welcome Professor Abdullahi Mustafa. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Yet, uh, from the classroom and laboratories to the CEO city and their boardroom, how germane are your thoughts, even today, on Nigeria's attention, on uh, attention development, as well as application when you talk about biotechnology? Well, um, you see, it's an interesting question, but uh, it's a normal question. Anybody that you see in class and anybody that you see in laboratory, that person's aspiration is to see that whatever he taught, whatever he researched on, is translated into product. Now, being a, a researcher and a teacher in a university, I have several thoughts of how to translate that research directly into a product. And uh, when I took office in, uh, uh, at National Biotechnology Development Agency, it is like dream come true in the sense that uh, all these ideas of translating researches into reality is now at my own table. Mm -hmm. And when I came in, that is the first thing that I've been talking about, research, research, research. Mm -hmm. After research, what next? Collaboration. Collaboration with so many industries, collaboration with so many organizations that matters. And those organizations that matters are the ones that now will help in translating whatever it is in there, in the uh, laboratory, mm. to uh, commodity where people are going to use it. So mm. that is exactly what it is, and mm. that is what I'm happy about. All right, uh, um, Professor uh, Musafal, I'm glad you, you finally had that dream of yours over the years of seeing what you've been teaching in the classroom, what you've been learning at the different fora, perhaps nationally and as well as internationally, being um, thrown to you to actually handle now. Where were your greatest concerns back then? And um, what did you meet? Is it in line with what the core vision or mission for NABDA? Is it going in the same direction that we can actually say, yes, beat our chest and say, back and out there in the bigger world, what we're doing in terms of research and development for biotechnology is on course. You see, um, the thinking of a university lecturer, I've told you, is to see whatever he does in the laboratory translate into reality. Now, in biotechnology, is a research institution whereby their main concern is research and is the interface between the 
uh, government focus towards actualizing whatever is set as a goal for its people with industry. So now the government has set up National Biotechnology Development Agency in order to transform the lives of people economically and otherwise. Okay. And when you reach that, it means whatever they're going to do, it has to be in conformity of, with government policy. And that is one aspect of partners. If you are in a university, yes, you have that platform, but not as a platform that government has already set for achieving certain dreams. And these dreams are what the government have already prorated. So now, these dreams that I met and this idea that I have are now combined together. And that is exactly what we are doing. When I came in, I told them that we are going to focus on research, research, research. They have been doing research, but I have increased the momentum mm. of engaging them into research. Mm -hmm. I've increased the momentum of engaging the outside community, being in, be it industry, international community, and other relevant organization for us to come together mm. and towards achieving that dream. What's in the name? That's what my next question would be. Recently, the ministry got the approval from Mr. President to have its rechristened, as I will say. <laughs> it used to be Ministry of Science and Technology. For now, we have it Science, Technology, and Innovation. And I'm sure something new in terms of energy to which you have already started injecting from the look of things is in the offing for NABDA. At a point, in your movements in the, uh, in, the, in the past months, you've had to say biotechnology can actually address issues for farmers, issue of farmers' herders' clashes as we've seen them, and also tweaking some of the already researched uh, materials or opportunities for greater commercialization. Take us through what your thoughts are on those areas, as I've mentioned. You see, I told you, it's not only addressing the farmer's hardest crisis. There are so many aspects. In biotechnology, we have different aspects mm. that we are working on. One, you know, environmental aspect is very, very important to human living. Mm. And we are working on environment. Mm. And we are working to see that we have created a better environment for, uh, for, for, for living in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And we are working with various uh, organizations, even with Federal Ministry of Environment and other relevant organizations to see we actualize mm -hmm. that. We are working on bioremediation because in recent times, you see, we, we, we employ people, we engage the services of foreigners to come and clean our environment, most especially when you remember the Ogoni. Ogoni cleanup. <laughs> exactly. So we're working on that to see that the domestication of this might Microorganisms, those microorganisms that are not foreign, are the ones that are being used to clean the organic land, not to introduce other microorganisms from other aspects. We are working t uh, tirelessly on that. We are working on the, the fingerprint of uh, uh, this is this is where we have been having a very good uh, rapport with the minister. The minister always is emphasizing the minister of science, technology, and innovation that we have to work this Nigerian crude oil fingerprint. We have to. Uh, find a solution to that because of the oil theft and some other thing. Mm -hmm. So that's one we are working tirelessly on that. We are collaborating with our sister agency, which is Chesco. Also, we have a biomedical. That is a medical uh, department. We are working in several aspects mm -hmm. of development. Mm -hmm. We are working on vaccine development and vaccine. That vaccine is including the uh, vaccine that... Uh, uh, a child could get uh, from birth till around one year. We are not manufacturing that vaccine and we don't have that technology. We are working to see that we have developed the technology that all these vaccines are uh, uh, produced in Nigeria. And we're working on the coronavirus vaccine. We're working on malaria vaccine. Yes, I was and going that to one, a... Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. We're working on that. We are, we've already, uh, it's during my time now that I created that we must work on malaria. Mm -hmm. We don't allow... Because it's endemic. Of <laughs> course, uh, it's, it's our problem. It's not a problem for other countries. It's our problem. So, so how we is have it going? To what, what, what stage are we? To be honest, you see, it's one year now. Research is something that you have to get fully organized. We, we, we have uh, uh, seek the approval and we've started gathering the, 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 the researchers 
that are going to work on that aspect. Some money has been set aside and uh, very soon we are going to advertise for those areas that we need people to come, either from diaspora or locally here, from university, from research organizations, and from industry. And in agriculture, mm. it is a very, very important aspect because you know this government uh, this administration is focusing on agriculture and uh, sure, national, food security yes mm. national food security mm. and even nutritional security mm. uh, because uh, if you have nutritional security mm. that one that mm. one is also a very important mm. aspect mm. of life mm. not only food but nutrition also mm. balanced diet mm. so when you have that one is uh, a major uh, is another important point okay. so uh, we are working on that and uh, recently uh, remember we have uh, released uh, a cowpea in yes. Kano mm -hmm. and that one is going to help a long way in solving so many uh, problems with the uh, abundance and availability of the soybean and apart from that uh, the losses and uh, the the, 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 the lack of interest of farmers is going to be taken care of. Mm. And also a lot of advantages, creating lots of job opportunity uh, for our younger ones. And this will even entice, because right at the moment I was talking to you, mm. we have several phone calls that people are, are, are looking for those uh, for, for, for the cowpea. They are looking for the cowpea to go and plant into their farm. Uh, the farm because of what they have experienced last year mm. when we give them tests. Mm. So uh, we were overwhelmed. Okay, we thought about, it was yeah, not we, going to we be like that. We took time to talk about the cowpea, that's the resistance type, uh, type now that yes. was developed. Yes, of okay. course. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you do that after the break. We're going on a break now. I'll let you take some breathers. And also, alongside cowpea, the issue of the soya beans, the value chain addition to it, exactly. because if we're going to be food secured and nutrition secure, like of you course. said, we must definitely be talking to the people who will need them, especially at the rural populace where we have the farming population as well. But of course, that can be done at the urban area as well. You're watching On The Spots. We'll be right back with the Director General, Nabda, in a moment. Okay, welcome back. If you just tuned in, the program is on the spot and I have the uh, Director General and Chief Executive Officer, NABDA. NABDA is the National Biotechnology Development Agency. It's, a, it's an agency under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. And great things are really happening. Innovative uh, issues have been taken on. And some of them were already decided talking about DigiSA. Uh, we have issue uh, with our yams, and which we're turning around in a great term uh, moment. We have uh, cowpea, we have soya beans, we have BT cotton. Value addition has always been an issue for what we've been able to do out, so that um, we find post uh, harvest losses at different point. I'm sure we'll, Nabda is taking on this challenge. Yes, of course. I, I, I told you, like, for example, the issue of yam that you've talked about. We have a lot of collaboration with uh, uh, a private organization now. The problem with yam, you know, you cannot have, m many farmers do not have the opportunity to keep a sup an, a, to keep a required yam for their replanting. And we have collaboration with them. The intention is to produce seedling for those farmers to ease their suffering. And we have, item we have isolated one good variety that everybody is interested in. Mm -hmm. And uh, the BioCrops is our partners and we are working with them. And we have started producing one million seedling now. And we, our aim is to produce five million seedling by next year, then 10 million seedling, seedling by uh, the coming year after next. Mm. So which means uh, we are trying to solve the problems of mm. uh, 
uh, the uh, farmers, these, those farmers that uh, plant mm -hmm. yam, using what is called aeroponic technology. Okay. So that is it. And uh, the technology are different, and uh, the, the, the hydrophonic and the aeroponic and the uh, tissue culture and whatever, we have all those technologies. Right. So translating this technology is uh, yeah. what we do to provide a solution what to our What you have, farmers. is it enough to actually service the nation? Because we know there are some agencies in so those the same um, functions, and which is another area people uh, are concerned, that's duplicity of functions in several agencies. So, and but I know you are interested in collaboration more, the more. And um, addressing this to actually fit the entire nation, how easy has this been? Well, uh, we, since I come, I think mm. my, we have a lot of visitors, and I visited some places, and still I'm going to visit some places. Mm. Uh, we have collaboration with Ministry of Agriculture, we have collaboration with our sister agencies, and the agencies that are in the Ministry of Health. So we have collaboration so that we see that we have a focus. We are all a government agency, and this government agency should not have a duplication. We have to collaborate, we have ideas, we cross fertilize ideas, and we work together, and that is the principle that will drive the economy forward and mm -hmm. faster. Uh, collaborative cross fertilization of ideas of researchers will bring faster production of uh, our, uh, our intention, our researches, so that uh, mm -hmm. we can quickly put to, putting heads together from different perspectives mm -hmm. is a solution, okay. and that is what we've been doing. Yeah. You're, uh, you're also someone with um, an open mind to what is happening in the scientific world. Of course, being, being, being a scientist yourself, perhaps that uh, explains that. But then there are other people, they might not be scientists, but they will also want to take on what the scientists are involved in. Let's take a look at GMOs, that's genetically modified organism, okay. and also genetically modified engineering this day is cutting across so many things. Now, you've also raised concern about technology being undermined by people who are called armchair critics. And you said they are taking advantage of the media. This media is to your advantage now to tell us what GMO is going to be doing for us or what GMO should not be doing for us. You see, you see the, the issue is that lack of understanding. All those that are having appreciation is because they don't understand. If you know what it is, then you will understand. Science, science is reality. Let me tell you, take us back. Had it been, it was now that in Nigeria, in Nigeria, they, there are so many things, for example, I'm not going to go back. I was trying to explain with uh, aeroplane and some other things, which people, I'm sure they, could have, they couldn't have done that at that time, but it was over time that uh, they agree mm. with it. But uh, this uh, vaccine of um, uh, coronavirus, mm. Using biotechnology, within shortest possible time, they have invented this vaccine. So if it were to be conventional, it will take years. Even though this one could have taken years because of the clinical trials, mm. but this biotechnology has provided a solution whereby, within the blink of an eye, this issue has been arrested. Otherwise, how many catastrophic deaths that could, could have to happen? Yeah. So that is biotechnology. Biotechnology simply means it's a tool that you can use to prefer solution to your problem. All these crops that you are talking about, the crops that are drought resistant, this is climatic condition. You can't do anything about it. Water is not going to be, going to be enough for your crop. So what can you do? Is to introduce certain gene from a similar plant so that that crop could survive even if the rainfall is not enough. So those genes have been altered, those crop genes. It's not are... altering, it's not always the case. People don't understand. Okay. It's not always the case that you alter gene. At times it's only a simple introduction. Like for example, uh, take it, this artificial insemination that has been taking, key, taking uh, place long ago, millions of years ago, is still in existence. It's by technology. It's transferring some certain character to another character. You take a bull that has certain character, maybe for milk production, for meat production, and you cross fertilize. You take the. So why this are one our to friends the, bothered about us accepting or taking in GMO? They generalize. Generalization is wrong. There are technologies also that you knock off gene, you add gene. Even as that is not a problem. 
is because they don't know. For example, you can't tell me somebody that read something like history, something like architecture, something like uh, uh, something that is not research oriented, to come and challenge somebody that has spent 20, 30 years in the lab working mm. and providing solution. And let me assure you something. Mm. This product, even if it is produced, no matter which way it is being done, it has to pass safety tests. Mm. And there are several several precautions that have been mm. taken care of. We have National Biosafety Management Agency here in Nigeria. Its work is to regulate, to give people this assurance that this thing is not, is, is not uh, harmful. Mm. And it is there, it's not even in the Ministry of Science and mm. Technology, but rather in the Ministry of Environment. Mm. And we have other regulatory agency which is headed, which is uh, supervised by uh, World Health Organization and some other organizations. Now, I know there are other concerns for implementation of failures. Those are the reasons over the years, so for policy somersaults, as well as other risks and uncertainties inherent in some of our policies. Is there, is there um, anything like that affecting what NABDA has been structured to do since you assume office? Well, uh, to be honest with you, um, even we, we, we have policy that even strengthens what we're supposed to do. For example, the addition to this uh, Minister of Science and Technology to include innovation. So this innovation of a thing is, is a policy that uh, now the government is now encouraging us. Come out, bring all those things that you are doing, this innovation that you're doing, then bring all those people that matters. This is a credit. This is something that is even encouraging. So this policy of a thing is even encouraging us not uh, bringing us down. So we have so many of those policies, but we, 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 we okay. take them it's, on. It's almost a year since your appointment. I'm sure there are other concerns. Uh, to be honest with you, you see, in every country, science and technology is considered as number one. Wherever you see they say this is a developed country, check it under. It's just science and technology that they have gone far in it. They have the technology, they have warfare uh, machineries, they have their agriculture, they have their health. They investigate and they keep their technology secret. Hmm. Whoever is interested, he has to buy from them. Hmm. So that is it, which means here in the country, hmm. we are praying that uh, the science and technology should be funded hmm. more. We are happy, uh, the, uh, Mr. President, has uh, approved 0.5% for uh, this science research. And uh, what we are hoping is mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. this thing should be implemented uh, before the end of this government so that this will be recorded in history that during his time it was approved. During his time, science and technology has been given uh, utmost priority. And it's left for us, the researchers, to work tirelessly day and night to see that we promote the science course of Nigeria, we, to promote the technology that is indigenous, that is made in Nigeria. Okay. Promotion of biotechnology, no doubt, is going to help every one of us. Is biotechnology the answer to aid in our food security and nutritional need, like you said? I know we touched on the aspect of GMO. Um, you, you, you answered it what, the way you thought you should, but is that the answer for us today to actually reach out from the bridging the gap, rural populace and urban population to actually addressing food security and issue of security. You see, that is, the, that, is the, that is the mission. Government has set up biotechnology, National Biotechnology Development Agency, to prefer solution to farmers. Farmers is one of the aspects. So this solution is to provide food security and nutrition security, even with the uh, animal uh, biotechnology yes. also. So this biotechnology is here to stay to provide solution to Nigerian populace. And we have already begun. You have seen the release of uh, BT cowpea. You have seen the release of uh, BT cotton. And you've seen the release. Uh, we, are, we are soon going to release uh, teller maize. We are going to release uh, uh, soybean that we're working on. So these are the components. Mm. Gradually, science, you know, it will take years. But we have to make sure everything that we do in the laboratory is real, is safe, and it's authentic and it's indigenous technology. And that is what we are doing. And that is what is taking us. So we have started and we'll continue to do it. Okay. On that safe note, I'd like to thank you so much for coming on the spot, DG. 
uh, Professor Abdullahi Mustafa DG Nabda. Thank you very much for coming on the spot. Thank you. We appreciate so much. your insight Thank and you. also your perspective to the different areas of biotechnology and technology generally. Thank you. And that's the program for this week. We appreciate your time to also. Next time we will be with another interesting guest. My name is Blessing Abu. Goodbye.